prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary for you Lord teach our children to stop the fighting start uniting live as that carries us into our daily lives with a knowing of who we are and what we're about. The Christian mystic Julian of Norwich is known for her deep love of God as mother. In her writings of her divine visions, she says this fair and lovely word mother is so sweet and so kind that in itself it cannot truly be said of anyone or anything except of God. Mother, Mother of life, 
mother of all things. in the energy of light and love, and the divine feminine, in this place we know, we know that we know God. We see, we see the divine feminine in others, male and female. in this moment allowing ourselves an opportunity to see again with innocence the innocence of a child to see again from a place of love of love for our mothers love from our mothers, love as mothers. I know, not all mothers provided what we may have thought that they should or could. We bless them for the life that we enjoy. And if we've been mothers and we look at our lives and we see that perhaps we haven't been everything we wanted to be, we forgive ourselves and give thanks for the life that we've given. So I invite you to go into that sanctuary deep within and let your hearts filled to overflowing with Divine Mother. Divine Mother. In the silence. It is in this connection with the divine that we receive that love that fills our hearts, that fills our minds, that feeds us. Recognizing that we are loved. living love whatever the circumstances that brought us to this place today we have a choice I invite you to feel the love that is in this room the love of God is always available the love Divine Mother, the love of the Divine Father, the love of God. Here we are. Here we are. All that we need. We are grateful. We allow joy to bubble up. allow joy to be to 
to be what we express in life. Joy that comes from knowing the truth of who we are as expressions of the divine. And so we allow our attention to return to this time and space celebrating. And so it is. Amen. So I will tell you that we have some really special music today. And I'm grateful. Allow yourself to feel this music. Let it fill your hearts. So we're going to do a uh, Sanskrit mantra, Hari Om, which is a universal mantra for removing suffering. And um, by repeating it, we're, uh, we affirm that our true self is beyond pain and suffering. And although we may experience that hurt, we can turn that energy into a more positive, higher energy. So um, we ask you to join along with us. Hari Om. Oh, uh-huh. 
Wow. If you enjoyed that, when you hear that we're going to have an afternoon with some karatan, karatan, this is the type of experience that you have. It's just wonderful. I, at the first service, I almost didn't get back up. I was so into it, I kind of forgot what I was about. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Divine Feminine Day. If you are a mother, I honor you. I honor you. If you're a child, I honor you. And that is whatever age as a child. Today, from Divine Mind, I want to share with you, it's celebrating the Divine Feminine. And Howard Thurman says, the responsibility to love is love. The responsibility to love is to love. It's what we're about. We're going to love. It's to love. He goes on to say that today is Mother's Day, not Thurman, but uh, the, the writer of this month's uh, Science Mind. He goes on to say that today is Mother's Day. This day can bring a lot of different emotions and feelings because of our varied experiences with our own mothers or mother figures. On Mother's Day, I remember my own mother. We had a complicated relationship, he says, and yet no matter what happened, I knew she loved me. The two quotes above capture the same qualities of love I experienced with my mother. Love is a quality of the divine feminine, which is celebrated all over the world today. And so we have the opportunity to celebrate. <sighs> Somebody said that you don't need to tell a mother that you love her. But what a kind and wonderful thing it is to do, to be about loving our mothers. <clears throat> if I may have our first slide. Myrtle Fillmore, who's known as the mother of unity, says that as sunshine brings out the color of beauty, so the light of love brings out the Christ virtues in people. So love, love, love. Just be about love. I want to share with you a story about a mother who knew about love, knew about divine love, and if she and Myrtle ever met, they would have been very good friends, I feel sure. This is a mother who received a call one day, and she was asked if she would take care of a child who had been born, a child that had been born with special needs, a child who had been born with a lot of special needs. So this is 1952. This young man was born premature. He had glaucoma. He had brain damage. He had additional eye damage. They had to remove his eyes as when he was, before he even left the hospital. He had so many special needs that his birth mother gave him up. She did not feel like she could handle the situation. But the hospital knew this woman who was a caregiver and took care of foster kids sometimes for short periods. So they called her and they said, May, we'd like you to take this young man and you need to know that he won't live long, but we know that you can love him during the time that he's alive. And she said, I'll take him. I'll love him. Oh, did I mention that he had cerebral palsy? He was spastic. He was not ever going to be able to walk. He could not even swallow. He had to be, his throat had to be rubbed for him to swallow. So this woman knew she was going to take on a lot. She was going to have a lot of special needs with this young man. She was willing. So she took this young man home. His name was Leslie Lemke. Some of you may have heard of him. He was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 
And May took him home. And she loved him. And she loved him. And she loved him. And she continued to encourage him to swallow. And continued. And continued. It was about a year before he could totally swallow on his own. They knew that he wouldn't be able to walk or speak. But it didn't matter. May continued to love him. So our first slide from Myrtle Fillmore talks about how it is that we can go about healing. Myrtle Fillmore says that the health law is threefold, that it's spiritual, keeping a person assured of his God-given freedom from all anxiety, worry, fear, and lack. And the next thing she says is that it's mental, giving him or her um, uh, the intelligence that enables him or her to do that that promotes health and success. And the third thing she said was that it was physical, and that was about forming habits to keep ourselves, or him or her, making the right use of their faculties, their powers, their life energy, and their substance. So this is one of the ways that we can heal. It's a wonderful way to heal. And so May Lemke continues to love and to be about these steps of healing. So after the first year, Leslie began to chew food on his own and receive constant care from May, for again, he could not walk. I may have the next slide. So, like I said, I think May and Myrtle could have been really good friends. For Myrtle said that God is love, and it is the nature of divine love to give life, joy, peace, and health. That is what God's love for us is. If we're willing to receive it. I am. I trust you are too. Here we are open to this divine love that does give life, joy, peace, and health. So May Lemke continued to love her son. Let's have a picture of her, please, Pat. And love her son with a love that was of great admiration. This is a photograph that's cropped out of a, a picture of her with him, and we'll see him in just a moment. So as Leslie began to get older, when he was about five years old, began to vocalize. He still couldn't talk. Began to vocalize. He began to vocalize through singing. So May continued to love him. Still not able to ask for what he wanted. Still not able to walk. May would take him outside in the sunshine and that she would hang him on the fence so that he could experience standing. And she would leave him there long periods of time so he felt what it was like to be upright. And hanging on this fence kind of began to move his feet a little bit. So May said, well... If he can move his feet a little bit, surely he will be able to walk. Now he's about nine years old, and May's a little bitty thing, and he's pretty tall. But she straps him to her feet, and she begins walking him. So she would walk him, and she would walk him, and she would love him with an incredible love. She continued to walk him and love him. When he was about 14, 15, I think it was, she decided that maybe some musical instruments would help this young man because the only way he communicated was through song. So she got him a piano. And of course, because he had cerebral palsy and was very spastic, he couldn't put his hands on the keyboard to play it. So she put her hands over his 
and moved them and just moved on the keyboard, moving them, loving him, caring for him, letting him feel what it was like to play music. Well, it seems that as he heard music on the radio, he began to pick up pieces, and he would occasionally play them. And then one night, now remember, this is a young man who cannot walk, and he's about 15, and May and her husband wake up to music playing. A concert in the living room, a piano concert. And she looks at her husband and she says, did you forget to turn, on the, turn off the radio? And he says, no, I didn't have it on. What's going on? So they jump out of bed. Remember, this is a young man who, hasn't, who have, has not been able to walk. And he is at the piano. And he is playing the full concert of Tchaikovsky by himself. She doesn't know where he has heard it. She doesn't know when he has heard it, and she has never seen him walk. But suddenly he is able to move, to get around, and May keeps on loving him. And she keeps on loving him. And there are people who say, well, he's a servant and he can learn this stuff, and all he can do is repeat it back. That he has not the ability to think about it. He has a Verbal IQ of 85. And she continues to love him. And he continues to unfold. Can we have the next picture, please? So I want you to, to know that she kept on praying for faith, with faith. And it is through that prayer that she feels that she was able to develop this young man's soul. She felt like it was God working through her, in her, with him. Again, she and Myrtle Fillmore would have been really good friends, I believe. So let's look at the next picture so we can see Leslie. Here he is singing his heart out. He was able to perform from concerts to pop, performing with joy. And May kept on loving, kept on loving him, kept on supporting him, kept on seeing the truth of who he was. He was able to repeat a lot of what he heard, such as, foster mom done well, but the time will come when the institutional placement will be necessary. But May kept on loving him. She was able to watch him walk. She was able to watch him sing. She was able to set up with a university in Wisconsin a concert where he performed. And he continued to perform there. And in 1980, someone heard his performance. And they said, wow, this is amazing. Before long, he was on 60 Minutes, Oprah, many of the TV shows. He became an instant hit, and May kept on loving him, and loving him, and supporting him with love. He toured all of the Scandinavian countries and Japan. He gave concerts in universities. He had an opportunity to make lots of money. Please continue on. You can see that look of love that she has. And the next one as well. So here this young man who was not going to even live, they didn't expect him to live for even a year, has responded to the love that this woman has given. Now, I know that many of us say, well, gosh, I didn't receive that kind of love, or as a mother, I didn't give that kind of love. And so maybe you're sitting there being a little... "Mm." So, if you didn't receive all the love that you wanted, 
Now's the time to open your hearts to receive it here. And if you haven't been the absolute parent that you wanted to be, I invite you to forgive yourself. I invite you to forgive yourself. Because I know that you've done the very best that you could do, just as May Limke followed her heart and did the very best she could do. That was what she was here for. That's what she wanted to do, was love. There was a book written about her called The Woman uh, Who Willed a Miracle. A Woman Who Willed a Miracle. And we might say that's true. But May said, no, all I did was love. All I did was love my son. She continued to love just as we have the opportunity to continue to love. Just as Myrtle Fillmore taught us to love, to keep on praying, to keep on in faith, to keep on knowing that wherever we are today, we have choice about how tomorrow will be. We have a choice about how tomorrow will be. May Lemke kept on loving. She kept on loving. She had the privilege of seeing this young man change, grow. And so you might ask, where is he today? You see, in 1992, May developed Alzheimer's. And I'm certain that she continued to love, even in that state. And when she died, Leslie went to live with his sister, who also loved him and kept on loving him and was able to see past all of the obstacles. And yet, in that love, they never took advantage. They could be very wealthy people, and yet they live in a very modest home in the northern part of Wisconsin. And May continues to love. I feel certain that she continues to love him from the realm that she's in of being everywhere. And I know that that love is in his heart. And there was a doctor, Dr. Donald Trifet, who studied savants. And he said, well, that's all this is. But he spent 30 years watching this young man. 30 years. And what he said was, no, this is not the savant experience, that it is more than that. Because he was able to make jokes. He became very humorous and, and witty, especially when he was in concert. He would stop and make a joke, have people laughing. He was able to learn to talk with people and communicate. He was able to listen to somebody play music. They would start 30 seconds before him, and he would be able to follow it and play it all the way through. He was an amazing young man, and he was amazing because his mother loved him. She was able to love past all appearances. And so we are able to love wherever we are today. We are able to love. There was a challenge Leslie moment. People like to see if they could call up songs and have him play them. And so he did. He was able to perform most any song. And people were like, how is this possible? How do you do it? They asked Leslie. And he said, well, people ask me to play songs. And if I don't know it, I make it up. <laughs> I just make it up. <sighs> and May's love continues just as God's love for us continues, just as we are given the opportunity to unfold and to love. And so if we love the truth, we are not afraid. and We are bold to put into a sea of faith. This is what is taught to us by Myrtle Fillmore, that if we love the truth, we are not afraid. We are bold to put into the sea of faith. We can do it. 
We can do it regardless of where we come from. We can do it regardless of the things that we think are in our way. We can do what we have been called to do if we are willing. So I'm going to quickly share with you some myths of motherhood. Somebody said that a child is carried in the mother's womb for nine months. And somebody who said that never carried a child and that understands that a child is forever in a mother's heart. Somebody says that it takes about six weeks to get back to normal after the birth of a baby. That somebody doesn't know that if you're a mother, you will always be a mother. Someone says that if you learn to, that you learn to be a mother by instinct, but they've never had a three-year-old that they went shopping with. Someone said that being a mother is boring. <laughs> someone, that someone has never ridden in a car with a teenager tra- practicing for their, their driver's permit. Someone said a good mother never raises their voice. Somebody had never went out back the back door just in time to see her child hit a golf golf ball through the neighbor's backyard. (laughs) Someone says that you don't need an education to be a mother. Someone never tried to do their fifth grade son's homework. (sighs) Someone said that motherhood is can find all the answers in books. But that someone has never had a child that stuffs beans up their nose. Someone said that the hardest part of being a mother is labor and delivery. Someone never watched their baby get on the bus for the first day of kindergarten. Someone said a mother can stop worrying about their child once they get married. Someone doesn't know that marriage adds a new son or son daughter-in-law to the mix. Someone said that a mother's job is done when their last child leaves home. That someone never had grandchildren. <laughs> someone said that a mother never he- needs to hear, I love you, for they know it. But that someone was never a mother. So let's take a moment to be grateful for our mothers and love them. Be grateful for the divine energy of mother love and love it and enjoy it and be in this place where we know the truth and we let it expand in all that we do and all the places that we go. And to my mother, thanks for coming today and I love you. Thank you, Mom. (laughs) God bless you.